What are the latest developments? So, Paul, on the economic front, we did hear, as you said, from the finance minister over the weekend, Liu Kun, saying that there would be additional measures now from China to cut taxes and fees to support the economy. This, of course, coming after we saw some additional measures around local bond issuance at the local government level and also the removal, or at least the softening of caps and quotas around loans for the real estate sector here. So we're getting additional measures from policymakers to try and support the economy. Of course, the Politburo has said that China will meet its social and economic targets. The question really is how much budgetary pressure China is going to be under and to what extent how aggressive these additional stimulus measures are going to be. The PBOC, of course, has also already lowered interest rates and pumped additional liquidity to ensure the financial markets remain stable. In terms of the numbers of cases, infections, as you say, here in China, 68,500 are the latest sets of numbers in terms of infections in China, 1,665 deaths. As you rightly point out, the rate of those additional infections uh, continues to slow. And we did have a doctor out of one of the hospitals in Wuhan saying that now, according to state media, this is starting potentially uh, to peak the rate of infections. And then we heard that the uh, new officials in Hubei province, of course, the epicenter, where uh, the Wuhan is the capital, have put in place even more restrictive measures on the population there, a population of almost 60 million. And they've been told that they should not leave their homes unless under emergency situations. And private cars in the province have also been banned from the roads. So the new leadership there, Ying Yong, former mayor of Shanghai, with a background in policing and security, ramping up the controls and restrictions in Hubei, as clearly uh, they seem determined uh, to try and get this virus under control and think that these restrictive measures may go some way towards that. <coughs> Now, Tom, there was, of course, some initial criticism of, of how the government handled the crisis in the early days. How's President Xi been responding to the backlash? Well, it's very interesting. Over the weekend, we saw that there was a speech published by President Xi that apparently he gave on February the 3rd, where he talked about being in control of the situation in Hubei from January the 7th. He said in the speech that he'd given verbal and written instructions to officials in Hubei from January the 7th, that in fact it was President Xi, he says, in this speech, who ordered the quarantine of Wuhan and surrounding cities in Hubei province. Now, this seems to be the publishing of this speech, an attempt by President Xi and his team to push back against criticism that he has been and that he stepped away, really, and that it was largely unseen during the crisis. But what it does is open him up to criticism because, of course, many would say that the handling of the crisis and of the virus down in Wuhan and Hubei has been mishandled. And particularly, there remains anger here in China about the death of the whistleblower Dr. Li Wenliang. And, of course, there remains a lot of scepticism about the numbers, about those rates of infections. And we had that remodeling, the recounting, of course, that happened last week that added to confusion for many people here as well. So it really leads to as many questions, some could argue, as answers. But it was interesting that President Xi saw fit to publish this speech, again, trying to push back at this criticism that he, in some respects, had stepped away from the handling of this crisis. President Xi saying he's been in control since January the 7th.